Alright, so I got word that there were some problems that the videos had some errors in, so I'm going to address those problems right now, and we'll see how it goes. I haven't prepped these, so I'm just going to do my best here. I suppose I'll make a numerical calculation at some point, but we'll see. So the first problem I'd like to treat is problem number 11. The first problem I'd like to attempt is number 11. Number 11 on my sheet looks like dy dt is equal to negative y over 1 plus t plus 2 subject to the initial condition y of 0 is equal to 3. Okay, so I look at this and I say, oh, it's linear because the derivative is raised to the first power and it's added together with y being raised to the first power. Um, there's some coefficient structure in front of y that has variables. I don't really care about that. Um, well, I guess I do care about that because, I mean, it depends on variables. The first thing that I'm thinking is that something like the method of undetermined coefficients isn't really going to pan out here. Um, so I just start with integrating factors. And for integrating factors... that I have to remember. One is that mu of t is equal to e to the integral of p of t dt, and that the next is that the derivative of mu times y with respect to t is equal to um, mu of t times maybe g of t or something like that. What I need to remember about all of this is that it assumes that the function or the ordinary differential equation is in standard form. And for standard form, this y term, all of the y term, all of the dependent stuff needs to be on the left-hand side. So in my case, p of t is equal to 1 over 1 plus t. You want to notice the sign change there. And then my g of t... Maybe I used Q of T back in the day, I can't remember, is equal to 2. All the leftover stuff on the right-hand side. So the first thing that I do is step 1. And in step 1, I say that mu of T is equal to E to the integral of 1 over 1 plus T dT. Doing this integral, this is E to the natural log of the absolute value of 1 plus T. Um, it could be a plus c, but that would be a multiplicative constant, and they factor out because neither the derivative nor this mu would care. So, or I mean, neither the de or the derivative wouldn't care, so this constant would be factored out in front of it, and this mu would also have that constant, so they cancel both sides, right? So we don't need that. So next, let's see. I notice that I can write this as the absolute value of one plus t. And since I have this initial condition of 0, for times that are beyond 0, right, this 1 plus t would also be positive. So the absolute value sign is not going to care. And so I can say that for this initial condition, right, this is equal to 1 plus t. Right? What happens is that there's a singularity sitting right here in the denominator. Right? The differential equation makes sense at all points in time except for negative 1. And that causes the domain of definition for the solution to split to times less than negative 1 or less than negative 1 and times greater than negative 1. Since our initial condition is greater than time t equal negative 1, I can just get rid of these absolute value signs. And the next thing is that this is step 2. I'm going to 
take the derivative with respect to time of 1 plus t times y, right? And that's going to be equal to 1 plus t times g of t, which is 2. So this is 2 times 1 plus t. If that's the case, then the derivative of this stuff, I anti-differentiate both sides with respect to time, and I get 1 plus t times y is equal to the integral of 2 times 1 plus t dt, which is going to be equal to 2 times t plus t squared over 2 plus c. And so that y of t, after I divide through by 1 plus t, is equal to um, 2 times... 2 over 1 plus t times t squared over 2 plus t plus c. Application of the initial condition, which I'll call step 3, gives y equals 0 is equal to 3, so this is equal to 2 over 1 plus 0, 0 plus 0 plus c. And so c must be equal to 3 halves, and so y of t is equal to um, 2 over 1 plus t times t squared over 2 plus t plus 3 halves. That is the solution to the initial value problem.